Lane Carey, how are you going? Good job. <laughs> Welcome to the Back Page Lead Vidcast. What are you laughing at? Um, you were in Perth on the weekend, I think, but mm-hmm. did you, uh, what did you make of that game? It was a cracker, wasn't it? West Coast and Carlton? Yeah, great game. Great game. Great uh, finals footy and, um, yeah, they kept coming, the Blues. And Look, it, it was just a, it was a, a, it was a really good game. Could have gone either way. But was there a free kick there, like Brett Ratton oh, said? And last... Probably 30 free kicks during yeah. the whole course of the game that were there that didn't get paid and probably a few that did get paid that weren't there. So I if, you got break it, if you break it down to that last little minute, then you would say that that was stiff. But I think that um, I just I just think it was just a terrific game of footy and if it had been played for another minute or so, the Blues might have got them. Well, all the frees were getting paid in the first half and none in the second, weren't they? It was about, I think it was... 19 in the first quarter even and two in the last quarter i don't look at the free kicks mate i look at the game not too worried about who, who's getting free kicks the game's been decided and west coast go into a preliminary final i'll ask you whether you think they can win in a second now the coaching carousel is in full swing isn't it brendan mccartney today appointed to the western bulldogs uh, a day or two after Mark Neal, of course, was pointed to Melbourne, and then you got Ross Lyon and the shenanigans about him joining Freo. Yeah, look at I thoughts, please. Yeah, thoughts. Thoroughly disappointed in the way Fremantle handled Mark Harvey. I think it was disgusting. Um, I think that uh, you know, I, we know that coaches get sacked all the time to be, be blindsided like that. Um, I, I just think it was uh, really poorly handled. Um, Ross Lyon leaving St Kilda. As I said, they get sacked all the time. Why not look after your future? I mean, I don't think he's done anything wrong. I think good on him. Um, I think that, uh, you know, on the flip side of that, like I said, Mark Harvey, I didn't like the way they did that, but they've, they've got who they wanted, mm. which is which is great. Great for Ross Lyon, not so good for Mark Harvey. Um, in terms of the other guys, I don't know. I, I mean... You would have played against Neil, I reckon. Yeah, in, I mean, he, yeah, he, uh, you know, he's obviously been under Mick Mouldhouse for a, for a fair while now, and and that's that seems to be the trend. If you've done a little bit of an apprentice under Mick or, uh, or Bomber Thompson or someone that's won a premiership in the last six or seven years, you, you, uh, you, you come highly regarded, and that's fair enough. What I will say is these, both of these guys are still untried. Mm. They've both been assistants. They haven't been in charge. It's a completely different kettle of fish. I would have thought that, well, I know actually I'd take that back because you're talking about Melbourne and the Western Bulldogs. Their finances aren't as good as other clubs. And let's be honest, they have to probably go for an, a, an untried coach that has been an assistant under a good coach because they simply can't afford to go and get a Ross Lyon, um, a Paul Ruse or a Mick Malthouse for that matter if he was to be out of contract. So that's what they have to do and uh, um, that's what they've gone and done. But... Two of those three names you mentioned aren't. Ruse is keep, keep saying he's retired for good and isn't interested in yeah, going I'm back not, into the coach's box. You not were, so sure about that. I, I, there's a there's a hint of Carlton for me about Paul Ruse. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we we expect to hear in the next day or so about Brett Ratton's future. Um, I actually agree with Mark McClure. I think that I don't see the problem with giving a coach a one year deal. Now, would he be happy about a one year deal? Probably not. Would he take it? Absolutely and it'd be performance-based contract um, for a year and then they, they reassess it again at the end of next year. They do it to players all the time. You don't think Ratton's done enough to warrant a two or three I think he, I think he's I think he's definitely passed, Mark, but why, why sign him to a long-term deal when um, they could be kicking themselves or, or uh, you know, looking at things differently in, in two years or three years? If Carlton don't play in a grand final in two years, then if Brett Ratton's there, he won't be there. With all the draft, high draft picks they've had. Well, yeah, so yeah. They, they would, they'd be expecting to play uh, deep into the finals next year. Let's just get back to Ross Lyon again. You, you see you don't have any problem with him looking after himself. No, but So go on to the days then well, when, pl- when coaches can talk to any player ever about loyalty. Well, I, I think that, I think, clubs full stop talking about loyalty is, is, a joke. is a joke now. I really do. I think, you know, it's a, it's a business. Um, 10% of players play 200 games, which is, you know, a 10-year career. I've, I've stated a couple of times. Mm. Um, so you've, you, you have to look after your future and coaches have to do the same thing. And um, So I don't begrudge him doing that. I think, I think he's, he has said that St Kilda 
could have put an offer to him um, to extend his contract for well, for a fair while now, and they didn't do it. They did it. Uh, they did it in a short amount of time at the end of the year when he's had time to speak to uh, mm. to Fremantle. What What's amazing about it is how no one knew about it. I mean, it is football football no, is a very hard place to keep secrets and rumours, and there were no rumours about him ever leaving. Staggering. I mean, the rumours were based around him in Melbourne, not not Fremantle. So. It's probably the best kept secret in football. But given how many journos are accredited by the AFL to cover the game, um, it's about three or four per player, I mm, think. Yeah. And yet this, this, these negotiations have been going on for 13 days and didn't sneak out. Fantastic. No, it was, well, yeah, great. I mean, whoever was doing the negotiations might be the, uh, would be the very people you'd tell a secret to because they haven't told anyone. Well, you certainly wouldn't tell a secret to a play manager, would you? Because, I mean, they kept Craig Kelly out of negotiations and it's been, they managed to keep yeah, well, you know, it very secret. Yeah, and, and I'm sure if that had been the case, it would have got out. Mm. It would have got out. He did manage the other co- coach, of course, Mark Harvey. But, but Mark Harvey... Uh, <laughs> Dean, D- well, Dean Wallace is um, being suspended for 16 weeks. They now lose... Um, Good point. They now lose uh, uh, Brendan McCartney. Mm. Uh, so that now opens the door for... Um, Mark Harvey to come back to the Bombers and make it even more of an incestuous club. <laughs> a fair point too. In, on that, on that point, I reckon. But by the way, Mark Harvey, I think, um, like you said, he, he hasn't done too much wrong. Fremantle had a very good year, decimated by injuries. I think he's uh, he's been hard done by, um, and unfortunately, um, guys like Harvey, uh, Ratton, um, Primus. Um, those guys are pretty much one club coaches. You can't see them being poached by another club. So um, for Harves, if he wants to stay in the coaching world, we'll probably have to go back to being an assistant for the mm. for the uh, for the time being. And and you know that that door has been opened because of a few uh, exits at the Bombers. What does Lyon's departure tell you about? what he thinks of the St Kilda list as opposed to the Dockers list. Obviously money was a big motivating factor and the security of the tenure, the four year deal, but it also says, does it not, that he thinks St Kilda's current well, squad have almost come to the end of the road? Well, he thinks, what he, what he would have looked, he would know um, Fremantle's list, so he would see the improvement that he could make in that list. Now the improvement for him is, is to make the finals next year. They didn't make it this year. Um, I think they would have made it this year with a bit of luck, with injury. So he can see an improvement straight away. Can he improve that St Kilda list? Um, can they get better than what they are or were this year? I, I, you know, I think they're they're um, they're going to they're going to have to perform at their absolute best and have a lot of things go their way for them to to go any better than what he's made them go. So. Mm. Um, whoever takes over St Kilda, there might be a one-way slope one way, and so he, he's he's a smart guy. He's a smart guy, so I I, I think he would have looked at um, obviously exactly what you said very closely. Just another quick one on the coaching. Mark Neal has been told by Collingwood to clear out his locker, which is totally understandable because they've got another couple of weeks to go to the finals. If Scott Waters, um, he was the midfield coach by the way, if Scott Waters takes a job as well. Do Collingwood get rid of him as well? So they're approaching the last two weeks, the most important two matches of their season, without their midfield coach and their defensive coach. Yeah, I'd, I'd, look, if he if he got the job, they would do exactly that. They've done it before. They've done it before. Um, and when the one thing you do realise, okay, football's changed where you've got all these different coaches. At the end of the day, Mick Mouldhouse and Nathan Buckley coach that side. They coach their areas and they they do specific things. But these guys. Um, you know, especially the midfield would coach themselves. I mean, I don't think they'd be, they, they would know what's going on. They've been doing it for long enough. They're a premiership side. Um, I don't think it changes too much for the Pies. Uh, my last question on the coaches. Do you think, following on from what you said, that uh, there is too much of an accent on young, untried, unproven coaches while Dennis Pagan's selling real estate out in Mooney Ponds? Look, I, I, I think... I think Dennis Pagan could quite easily um, coach an AFL side today. Um, I think that you know the perfect fit for him would be a side like you know the the, uh, the Melbournes, mm. Fremantles, um, you know those types of sides, Port Adelaide, that, where they need some a real hard an iron fist, so to speak. Yeah, I think yeah. he'd be uh, he'd be fantastic. 
Um, will he be given that opportunity? Will he throw his head into the ring? Well, I can't see it happening, but it'd be it'd be great. He might I'd, be too tough for the generation wires, mightn't he? Well, sometimes you 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 need you need a bit of hardness at your footy club to, and and like I said, I think you know sides like Melbourne need that, and I think. Um, the one thing that Mark Neal has said mm. is that they will be a very tough side to play against. So um, he, he, he might take that hard-nosed approach that I think they need. The one thing I will say about coaches, and I, and I don't know either of those guys well, is you know, I think there has to be a little bit of fear of your coach. They have to have a little bit of presence. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you think of that, Charlie. But I, Well, not having played at the top level, Wayne, uh, but... In my modest career, I think you're probably right. It's you know, too when, early to when, say. When people the... walk into a, when Paul Ruse is in a, if Paul Ruse is your coach or Mick Mouldhouse, and not everyone can be a Paul Ruse or a Mick Mouldhouse, I understand that, or or even a Wusher. Mm. I mean, he, he's got presence mm. about him. They not they can't all have that presence, but I, I reckon it makes a big difference. The players, if the players have a little bit of fear and you have a bit of presence about you when you're the coach, not so sure about. A bit early to say. I mean, you, we shouldn't probably prejudge him, but I, I no, know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, they they're both sort of low, lower profile footy figures and seem to be mild mannered guys. Um, but you need the fear mm. a little bit. Um, let's talk about the footy, the on field stuff. Um, West Coast got a bit banged up in that game against uh, Carlton, didn't they? And I think Kennedy hurt his eye, and Mackenzie's in a bit of strife, and so's Lacroix. Are they any chance of beating Geelong? Oh yeah, I, I, look for right. them. For them, it's a it's going to be a real mental mental game, and it's a mental it's a mental game anyway. But you know, to play such a good game against Collingwood and then you know fall over the line on the weekend, then fly back to Melbourne this weekend. I mean, it's going to be a big ask. Mm. But if they can come with the attitude that they did against Collingwood, especially come over here and start the game and pressure the Cats like they did Collingwood. I mean, they're a good chance. I, look, they, they, they've got strengths all over the ground. They are a very good side. And the guy that was just instrumental in that win was Daniel Kerr, mm. who I absolutely love. I think he's, a, he's just a super player. Great to see him back to his best. If he was playing against Collingwood, they would have won. Yeah. And I know Collingwood had players out as well, but Kerr was a late withdrawal, if we remember. He if he'd got up and played in that game, West Coast would have won that. Yeah. He, uh, he, was, he was great. And, uh, you know, they, they, they are certainly capable, but I just think the Cats with the week off, you know, and um, you'd, you'd have to say that they're, they're red-hot favourites to, to win it. And, and I think they will. I think they'll beat West Coast. But I think in, in saying that, that, they're not without a chance. No, Ottens has got a big job ahead of him, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But he's, uh, he's a big game performer, Brad Ottens. True. And what about the other game? I mean, it would seem to me that fate might be starting to smile a bit on Hawthorne now and they might give themselves a, yeah. a decent chance. Of yeah, look, uh, you know, Buddy pretending he had a knee injury all the last <laughs> week, um, nothing wrong with him. You had him out. Nothing wrong with didn't him. It? Yeah, well, who didn't have him out? Yeah. Everyone had him out. Mm. But I, I think that, yeah, look, look, the Hawks are a chance. Um, you know, I, I know that they, uh, Collingwood hold fears of Hawthorne. They think that they're capable on their day and they are and we know that. Um, they've been ultra. They've been ultra consistent all year. They had a bit of a lapse against Geelong, where they got beaten at the stoppages and then contested ball. I can't see that um, happening again. I think they'll learn a lot from that, and I think they'll be uh, they'll be a hard nose. This, this will be good, good a game. good classic yeah. hard finals footy, yeah. um, which uh, which you'd expect in a preliminary final. I yeah. think this will be an absolute ripper. Yep. And finally, um, we've got the Brownlow next week and we'll probably do the taping just before the medal presentation. I know it's one of your favourite nights. You always used to love going. Um, have you got an early tip? Um, look, Chris Judd's going to poll well, as we know. Mark Murphy might take a few off him. I think, and we know that he polls. It's been his best season that I've seen. I think Adam Goods might, might upset. Either way, if Adam Goods wins, it'll be his third. If Chris Judd wins, it'll be his third. So one of those two. Maybe a draw. Judd Goods draw the brown low. Okay, you heard it here first. Wayne Kerry, thanks so much for your thoughts again. Thanks, mate.